Uh, I'm Luyang from Google right now, so I'm going to present this work called Edge Assisted Real-Time Object Detection for Mobile Augmented Reality. And this work is done during my PhD degree in Rutgers working with uh, Hongyuan and Marco. So mobile augmented reality has shown its potentials to enable many different applications, like in the field of video games, education, healthcare. And we show that like there's a lot of industry efforts, such as HoloLens, uh, like AR keys, AR cores on devices, that they already have pretty good understanding of 3D geometry of surroundings, so you can put some like virtual object in a flat plane. But uh, we find that there's uh, actually a limitation that they lack the ability to detect and classify complex objects in the real world. So this can actually like enable many different ap applications such as smart retails or you can maybe you can detect the human's key points you can do some like human interaction with virtual objects. So we find that the problem is actually it's impossible to run high quality object detection models on mobile phones at high frame rate. And we show that like there's uh, some benchmark like um, uh, some different kind of uh, CN network like mobile night and rest night running on pretty low resolution image on this uh, current commercial high end mobile devices. And we see that like this the inference time on these devices most of them requires more than 100 milliseconds to inference. So if we want to further pursue an even high uh, object detection accuracy, we need to use some more sophisticated models which will use more resources and use more inference time on the device. So actually there's opportunities that like uh, can we like offload this vision test to an edge cloud uh, to use their powerful resources on the, on, the, on the cloud to help us to make it faster. So the edge cloud can be your nearby like lab, lab, desktop PC. It can be a pretty close uh, workstation, uh, with pretty close cloud in, a, in your closed uh, like base station. So you can offload your capture image through the network to the edge cloud and process using their powerful computation, computation and then send back the results back to the client and display on, lay, uh, overlay it on your current field of view. So we find that uh, even with this kind of uh, like uh, edge offloading, it's still pretty hard to achieve a pretty high uh, quality because of this whole pipeline even happened on pretty high-end devices and pretty high-end uh, network resources, it still requires like around 80 milliseconds to process, so which will significantly decrease the detection accuracy because like the detection result as we show on this figure may, may no longer fit your current field of view anymore if it happens like after 80 milliseconds. So uh, here's a contribution of our work. So we propose a system that tried to like solve these problems and we propose several low latency offloading techniques that is able to reduce the latency from 80 milliseconds to only 15 milliseconds. And we also propose some fast on device object tracking technique that is fur further able to reduce the latency to only 2.24 milliseconds, which is very lower than the human perception latency. And with some other offloading, adaptive offloading technique to schedule the resources consumption, we finally we can achieve a system that uh, actually can run 60 frames per second high quality object detection on mobile devices on pretty high resolution of uh, 1280 by 720 resolution video frames. And so uh, I'm going to introduce some of our key techniques here. Uh, so the first one we call a dynamic uh, region of interest encoding. So the basic idea is we want to know whether we can find some ways to reduce the time to transmit the frame from the client side to the server side. So uh, the most, intu most straightforward way is we can reduce the encoded frame size to reduce the, uh, so giving the same network throughput, we can reduce the latency to transmit the image. So there are typically several ways to do that, like you can either uh, use a low resolution frame or you can apply some lossy compression on the frame to make the encoded frame size lower. However, we find that both of them will significantly decrease the detection accuracy after the server received the frame and uh, put them in the uh, object detection model. So this is the reason we propose this dynamic region of interest encoding method. So the key uh, principle uh, uh, of, of, this, of this method is that we want to put higher encoding quality on those regions that carries more information, well, we can put lower 
uh, encoding quality on those regions that doesn't carry a lot of information. So uh, how we get the, which region is more important is we, uh, uh, we are leveraging the spatial and temporary uh, correlation between the continuous frame. So if we find like that there's a lot of objects or region of interest detected in the last of all these frame, we think these regions are more likely to have more information within it. So we will create a mask uh, for encoding for the next frame and we put those macro blocks that overlaps with the region of interest of the last frame with high quality and put all of the remaining macro blocks with low quality and use this mask to do this region of interest encoding on the current frame. So with this method, we find that we can actually uh, largely reduce the uh, encoded frame size while keep the most important information in the image uh, after it gets transmitted out to the server. Uh, so. Uh, Another, another key technique we propose is like, uh, I think like uh, Lily just uh, proposed a similar things like we, we, we want to do this parallel streaming and inference on, the, on this uh, transmitting pipeline of the, of the uh, video transmitting from the client side to the server side. So the traditional uh, like approach will do this encoding, transmission, decoding, and inference in a, in a sequential way. So what we, what we try to do is like we can split the whole image into several slices and transmit them in a, in a separate way. So each frame can be immediately in, transmitted out after it's encoded, and it can be immediately put into the uh, uh, CNN model for inference after it's received by the server. So we show in the bottom figure that uh, actually, uh, oh, there's something. Uh, and uh, in, the, uh, in the figure that it's actually largely reduced latency to only half of the original latency compared to the, uh, compared to the baseline approach. So there's actually one challenge towards us to get this done because like uh, for encoding, transmission, decoding is fairly easy. We can like just put them into slices and transmit. But for inference, like it's pretty hard to do inference on each slice of the image because like the, each object may lie on different part of the image. Like if, for example, the card on the first and several slices and if you detect among two different slices and uh, finally merge them together, it will really decrease the performance of the, of the, of the CN model. So to overcome this, we propose another dependency aware inference method. So the basic idea is we still treat the whole image as a whole image, but we, uh, we build the whole like convolutional inference uh, model using the home image res resolution. But we only infer those features as, as those slices arrive. So each, after each slice is arrived at the uh, server side, we decode the frame and put them into the uh, inference engine to do the inference. And we only calculate those features on each layer that we have enough input from the last input layers. So that like as more slices arrive, we calculate more feature values on each layers. And at the end of all every slices arrive, we calculate the whole feature map. And uh, we find that the feature, feature values are actually the same with the feature value if we put the image as a whole into the CN model. So with this dependency of our inference method, we are able to uh, keep the uh, high quality of the object detection model where we can achieve this parallel streaming and inference method. And uh, so we further want to improve this, uh, further reduce the latency uh, using this uh, on-device fast object tracking technique. So the basic idea is that like we use the we try to find a motion vector to shift the original, like cache the result to the current frame so that we don't cause any like this inconsistency problem and cause some motion sickness. So uh, the, our solution use a motion vector embedded in the video frame instead of using some traditional sift or optical flow method so that we directly use the motion vector that generated by this hardware accelerated encoder so that we don't use extra resources on the board. Uh, so here's a brief evaluation. So we evaluate our system on end-to-end uh, -end, uh, system with a uh, client and server. Uh, so the, on the client side, we're using an uh, NVIDIA Jetson TX2 device, which has the same SOC as the uh, uh, like current released, uh, uh, recently released the Magic Leap 1 uh, AR, AR devices. And uh, uh, so for the server side, we're using a desktop PC with a Titan XP GPU connected, and both of the, uh, and the server and client are connected through Wi-Fi wi connection. And we value our system on 10, 10 videos in a pretty, uh, pretty famous data set. And there's a lot of different kind of motions and many different peoples. And we are, 
we're evaluating on two, on two different object detection tasks. One is the object detection, traditional object detection, and the other one is the human key point detection task. And uh, we show that our, our evaluation results show that we, our, our system actually outperformed the baseline approach in terms of both accuracy and how many objects we can successfully detect it. And we have also implemented uh, uh, this uh, uh, like a demo, demo app, uh, which is the AR app that tries to render a small wipe on a user's uh, left hand key point. And we find that the baseline approach due to the latency, the board cannot hold in the hand in a very good way. But with our system, we, we show that the board like, keep moving with the hand moving up. So which shows a pretty, pretty high accuracy compared to the baseline approach. And yeah, so here I'm gonna conclude the talk. So in this work, we uh, design a end-to-end uh, -end system that can enable high quality object detection for AR and also uh, mixed reality in the future and running at 60 frames per second also on high resolution image frame. And we propose several low latency offloading techniques that can be easily transferred to other fields like video streaming or some other kind of uh, uh, other fields. And we also have some uh, on-device fast object tracking techniques proposed. So uh, in the future, I think there are several directions that can further increase this and improve the system and make it maybe even better. So one thing is to improve the network robustness. Uh, like this is, this is something we haven't done in this work. And uh, I think like improve the cap in camera capture and screen display latency is also a big challenge for both VR and AR like uh, systems. And uh, like definitely some better client and server collaboration will also be very valuable in this kind of field. So here I'm gonna end my talk and thank you very much for listening and I'm here for any questions.